So I've grown quite attached to this odd ZT, the ZT0055 GTC designed by Gustavo Ciccini. I think that's how you pronounce his name. A, an acclaimed Brazilian knife designer who has made some very, very interesting design strides in folding knives over the last 10 years. This knife I got because it was on sale because they're discontinuing, well, they said they were, and now they're coming out with some sprint versions, but they were discontinuing this version, and I found it on sale. And I always thought it was a super cool knife and a very unique kind of showpiece knife. And then knowing that it's coming from ZT, it would have a very high level of quality in terms of manufacturing, fit and finish, uh, sharpness, and all that stuff. So if you're going to get a crazy exotic sort of um, novelty knife, it may as well be made by ZT, so you know it's gonna, it, it'll be a pleasure to use. So what is the design designated utility of this knife? I'm gonna say it's a showpiece knife. I'm gonna say it's a manufacturing prowess knife. In other words, uh, they are showing off how they can make a knife, how how well they can make a knife in this piece because not only is it heavily milled in the handle, and uh, not only does it have a unique blade shape with with uh, kind of a, a difficult grind for manufacturing, but it also has a unique and new and different deployment system. This GTC SLT deployment system, uh, designed and conceived by uh, Gustavo Ciccini. Uh, I guess he cracked open a revolver, was looking at a revolver and the, the trigger housing of a revolver and liked the mechanism. And so he created this for his knife called the Airborne, which is a, a custom knife that you can buy if you have tons of money and are on lists or you luck out on the secondary market. Let me show you that. So this knife is deployed with a flipper tab, but the flipper tab is spring loaded and sits sits deeply inside the uh, this well here. So to actuate it, you put your finger there, you pull it back, and it opens. It uh, rides on ball bearing, it's got a ball bearing pivot, so it's very smooth, um, but the action is different because there feels like a little delay. It feels like a trigger on a gun on a revolver, kind of. Uh, so you pull this, you feel the resistance of that spring, and then it catches there, and then it loads up until it gives way, and the whole assembly rotates rotates out. Uh, it's a unique, unique system, and you gotta give props to uh, ZT for manufacturing it on a, on a wide scale, because it's complicated, and it also, uh, it also brings up the, the specter of warranty issues because the more parts you have, the more parts that can go wrong, the more things that can go wrong with the mechanism. So they're taking something relatively simple, uh, like the flipper, and adding an extra element to it with this SLT, but they did a great job. Um, maybe in the beginning, people were complaining a little bit of some issues. Uh, um, mine came flawlessly, uh, mine came flawless and has been operating flawlessly. And uh, I, I kind of got it as a lark because I like interestingly designed knives, but it's turned out to be quite a nice EDC to me, for me. Uh, there are a few caveats there, but uh, and I'll explain those in a second, but I have found this blade shape, this blade to be really useful, um, especially as you might imagine in this kind of cutting. Um, so the first surprise was in how useful I found this blade shape. I thought I knew it was going to be sharp, but I thought it would just be kind of just there to look cool. I mean, that looks like a stealth fighter wing to me. It's really cool. It looks like something Batman would carry. Um, and then this handle. This handle is so beautifully shaped and milled and textured, uh, but it's not very comfortable. It's comfortable in this grip, in this Filipino grip just about only. And then I guess it's okay like this too. The problem with this, the discomfort comes with the uh, the butt of the knife. By the way, this makes an exceptional 
Kubaton if you needed to. You use this uh, for a non-lethal kind of head knocking. It fits great in the hand for that. Uh, but anyway, this pointy end, you can see it's pointy on two axes. That and that comes to that sort of faceted diamond tip. Well, when you're going to open the knife, it kind of stabs into the palm of your hand because uh, like most of us, I brace the knife in the, in the meat of my palm and then actuate it. So this takes a little getting used to. I mean, this is not, this is not something you're going to do lots of heavy work with because this will just kill after a while. But uh, in everyday carry, I like carrying larger knives. In everyday carry and use, uh, this has charmed me, I have to say. As you can tell by the, by the fob. It's like, if you like it, put a ring on it. Uh, for me, it, if I like the knife, it goes through a, a, a stage where it has a lanyard. And boy, if it's a leather lanyard, I really like it. So yeah, 0055. Very interesting knife. Um, let me see, I have a couple of knives that it reminds me of, that it compares to. I know it's kind of a, a strange leap, but this Microtech, uh, Microtech SOCOM Elite, to me, is in a similar category because it is a, uh, it's got a multifaceted blade. I mean, look at the different grinds on that. It's not a simple Tanto. Um, it's got a ball bearing pivot. It's got, it's got this shape that just calls into calls it into your palm as a as a sort of makiwara or, or kubaton or something like that, and it's got a sort of tapering uh, butt end. So I don't know for some reason these these sit in the same category to me, even though this is uh, decidedly more tactical and uh, you know you would you would much rather have this if you were you know going to war. It, it's just got more utility, uh, but the some of the aesthetics ring true or ring similar. Uh, the Wee Knives 609. This is a new one for me. That's uh, I'm in the honeymoon phase with. Also similar. It's got uh, it's got a cool grind. It's got a multi. You know, it's got this nice swedge here and the swedge here, and it's got a lot of different elements to it. The handle is nicely milled, beautifully milled. I got it in purple because this was on sale. And I guess if I had my choice, I may have gone with something else, but I, I am a sucker for purple. I do like purple. This is my first purple knife. No, I take it back. I have the Delica. This is a big ass knife though. Um, but same sort of thing, has a tapering end. Look at this. Both kind of menacing to the palm of your hand or to uh, someone's forehead. So it has a similar, similar sort of vibe. So they have just come out with uh, the black wash sprint of this and a bronze and black wash. And I gotta say, it looks beautiful. Uh, but I am a sucker for the, for, the, uh, for the good old silver knife, silver in color that is. And uh, this 0055 is doing its job, which is light EDC and then dazzling people. Yes, I am impressed with you ZT, this is impressive. So. You can check that off. That's that's two out of three, and then for the uh, for the third, I like showing it off to people. So this is a show off knife, and uh, it's a good one because it's a useful show off knife. And that is my opinion. All right, the ZT0055. If you like the design, if you like the idea of this, the SLT opener opening system, I would say get it. Get it while the getting's good, because I don't think they're gonna last too long. I think they are on their way out. All right, everybody, thank you for watching, and keep your knives sharp.